Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School back with another in our green woodworking series. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about making a miniature bucking saw. And we'll deconstruct this a little bit, but the most important part of this for you as a lesson is the blade itself, which is made from a, I believe it was a 12 tooth per inch bandsaw blade. Might have been 10 teeth per inch. The important part of that is it's a very fine cutting blade and it's made from a full length bandsaw blade and I'll show you how to cut those down and make those fit this type saw. But making a takedown buck saw is pretty simple. I have videos on it myself in on my channel and there's lots of other channels out there to show how to make a buck saw. So the folding buck saw or takedown buck saw is not the important part of this lesson but what you can do with a small miniature version with a bandsaw blade is you can use this very much like a coping saw. And that's important for green woodworking. It will take some of the axe work away if you have this small tool with you, or you can make this tool on the fly and just carry the blade that's pre-made, pre-measured, and ready to go, just like you would carrying a larger blade for a takedown buck saw. And it will allow you to do things like cut blanks by making coping style cuts on the outside of th something so that you don't necessarily have to use your axe. Stay with me, and we'll deconstruct this bad boy, and I'll show you how to make this blade. So once you've taken your windlass device off of the top, you basically have a simple frame that comes apart like any other takedown buck saw. You have two nails that are holding everything together right here that are just box nails that I've ground down, and then you have two frame components. This blade is the only tricky part of this saw. And I'm going to show you how to make this blade. It's very, very simple. We're going to make this blade from a bandsaw blade, which is a circular blade that goes on a bandsaw. And one bandsaw blade that costs $7 will make about five or six of these blades. So for $7, you can make a really nice takedown coping type saw for green woodworking and have five or six spare blades on top of that for the same $7 price tag. So the first thing you need to know is how long your blade's going to be. Now, when I made this one, I made it fairly small and packable on purpose. But you could go a little bit larger and make this a 12-inch span from here to here, and then it would be capable of using all of the blades that you can buy for a normal hacksaw. You can get regular green wood blades like pruning blades by Baco, in that length you can get meat sawing or bone cutting blades in that length you can get hacksaw blades in that length so if you make this a 12 inch length you have the capability of putting lots and lots of different blades on and making it a more versatile tool but for a coping saw what we want to do is we just want to measure our distance here and it should be the same distance as your support is if your supports cut center line with everything else my my support is center line here to my hole for the most part, very, very close to it. And if that's the case, all you have to do is measure your support, and that's going to tell you how long your blade is. My support is 10 inches, and my blade length is right at 10 inches, or 10 and an eighth, according to this, which is really, really close. So once you get to that point, all you need to do is cut that length of blade. And here's how we're gonna do that. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna figure out where 10 inches is at on our blade. Now remember that this blade was a circle when we bought it. So we used exactly the same technique I'm going to use now to cut the blade to begin with. So I measured 10 inches on the blade and then I just put a mark on the blade with a marker. Just like that. Now you're going to have to heat an area of this blade up like this is to cut it and also to make it soft so it's drillable because right now it's very, very hard steel. It's been tempered to spring steel. I used map gas for this, but you could use a regular propane torch or possibly just an area of a campfire or burning ember if you had to. torch is being difficult. Right where your mark is. Now 
once you get it to that point, you'll be able to cut it very easily. You can just set it up on a hard metal surface. Get yourself a cold chisel and a hammer and snap it right off. Now what I did with my blade was I took, let's get a double measurement here just to make sure where we're at. We are just a little bit under 10, really, really close. Now I just pounded it down flat on a metal surface in case it bent when I was cutting it. And then I just took and rounded it off on a grinder here on the top side. And then just took a regular drill bit. You can bend this around now because it's pretty soft. Just take a regular drill bit and drill an eighth inch hole in both ends of this blade. Once you have drilled the holes in your blade with your normal everyday drill, it doesn't have to be anything special and neither does the bit. Assembly is very simple. Put your spacer bar in the middle and your pieces together like this. Put your blade in here, drop your pin in, and pull the hole until the pin falls in. That method works well for me instead of trying to fish around for the hole. It'll fall in there all by itself. Then all you have to do is take your windlass and put it back on over the top of both of your supports. And you can notch these supports if you want to. I didn't on this saw. But you could easily do that and then just begin to wind it up to tighten it. And once it gets fairly tight, everything will secure up. You can get everything the way you want it. Make sure your pins are pushed all the way in. Everything's aligned right. And go ahead and tighten it down as tight as you need it. But don't over tighten it. It doesn't need to be overly tight to be nice and stable. Once you get to that point, you're ready to go to work. What we can do with a small saw like this is we can use it for cutting stock or stock removal from things like spoon blanks to get blanks ready without using our axe necessarily. Come in here. Like this. And pretty much follow that line because that blade's flexible. And we can turn that saw sideways. You can see how I'm following that line down. Still operating the saw with the blade turned completely sideways. Depending on which way I turn that saw, I can direct that blade about anywhere I need to. Again, come in and cut out the waste. And readjust. I can cut my whole spoon blank out with that saw. Okay, this was a piece of black walnut. I sanded it down and cleaned it up just so you could see the line that you can get with that saw. Basically, you can get a curved line out of that saw, very much like a coping saw that's made for woodcraft with this small miniature bow saw. And if this would have been green wood, not dried black walnut, it would have cut much faster and much easier but that shows you that even on a piece of hardwood a saw like this works very very well okay guys well I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I appreciate you joining me today for this video on how to make a miniature folding buck saw or coping saw in this case for green woodworking I appreciate your views I appreciate your support 
I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.